Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today's lecture would be um, well, not very scientific. I'll just talk about um, certain usages uh, of electricity, um, and I will try to classify it somehow. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. So this website actually um, contains uh, not only uh, just individual videos, but it's a course. Physics for Teens is a course, which means there is a menu. Uh, the whole course is divided into parts, chapters, lectures, whatever. So I do recommend you to take the course and sequence it's presented. Also, there is a prerequisite course on the same website. It's called Math for Teens. Math is definitely needed for everything you do in, in physics. And not only in physics, obviously. Um, so, uh, the site is completely free. There are no uh, any kind of financial strings attached. There are no advertisement. So, pure knowledge for your consumption. Okay, so let's talk about usages of electricity. So, we're using electricity in certain devices, and there are many, many different devices. So, what I have decided um, is I I'll break in two very large groups. I call them electric and electronic devices. And um, the way how I can, you know, differentiate them is the following. Um, electric devices are those which use electricity to do some mechanical uh, work or, or heating. Um, by the way, when I'm saying heating, I uh, actually include lighting as well, because lighting <coughs> in many cases is produced by heating. Not all cases, but in many cases, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. So it's heating and heating-related lighting. So these are main purposes of devices which I call electric. And another group is electronic devices. Well, computers and stuff like this. Now, um, this will be a subject of a separate lecture. So today I will talk only about electric devices. So, as I'm saying, I'm, and it's completely voluntary, I mean, obviously, I mean, some people might might differentiate or classify devices differently. That's that's my choice. So today I'll talk about um, devices which are using electricity to produce mechanical work and heating. Okay, so I have a list of different examples of where exactly the mechanical work is performed by um, electricity. Now the first device is obviously electric motor and we are using electric motors like everywhere. For example, I'll just read whatever I wrote. Water pumps, elevators, fans, compressors, um, in manufacturers, plants, all different devices are rotating, like conveyor for instance, uh, or crane or something. All these devices are using electric motors. All, dr all drilling washing machines. By the way, in case of washing machine, for instance, we are using electricity for two different purposes. One is to rotate the drum, and another is to pump the water in and out. So, it's one device, and it's using two different kinds of motors, electric motors. So, electric motors is a big deal. Now, um, as an example, as an example of um, the usage of uh, electric motor in the water pump, I actually would like to do some calculations. So, the calculations is what kind of motor I need to supply the water to the building where I live, for instance. So, approximately the data is as follows. We have 12 floors. Each floor, let's say, has three meters high, approximately, okay? Now, I have 200 apartments, and in the morning, during the three hours in the morning, let's say from six to nine, 
average usage is about 100 liters of water. And that's what I would like to supply to the building. Now, how do I supply it? Well, well there is obviously the main which is coming from the street and there is a pump. Now, this pump is pumping the water onto the roof to the tank. There is a water tank on the top. And then from the water tank it goes by, by the gravity. So, all this water I have to lift to the roof first. I mean, that's, that's the power which, I sus which I'm supposed to supply. So, let's just consider what is amount of work which is performed during this time, during first three hours in the morning. And then we can divide it by time and calculate um, the power. Okay, so what is the amount of work? I'm lifting certain amount of water. Now, what is amount of water? Well, it's 200 apartments, 100 liters each. So it would be, amount of water will be 20,000 liters. Now, to lift it to 12th floor, each floor is 3 meters, so it's 36 meters high. So I have to lift 20,000 liters uh, of water by the height of 36 meters. Um, now, the force which I have to basically apply to this um, is uh, mass times G, right? Weight, basically, weight or force is equal to mass times G, which G is 9.8 meters per second square, right? So mass times acceleration. So I have to lift it, the weight, this is the weight, basically. And uh, the mass of a liter of water is one kilogram. So basically I have to F is equal to 20,000 times 9.8 um, newtons, right? Kilogram times meter by second square, that's newton. So I have the force and I have the distance, 36 meters, I have to lift. So if I will multiply F times height, I will have work, which is equal to 20,000 times 9.8 times 36 meters. And this is equal to 7,056,000 joules. That's amount of work. Now, this amount of work is performed by time is equal to 3 hours, which is 3 times 3600 seconds. If I divide my joules, <coughs> work divided by time, that would be my power. So I have to divide 7 million something by this, and the result is 653 joules per second, which is 6053 watts. This is watts, okay? Joule per second. So this is the power which is necessary to pump the water up to the roof. Now, what's obvious is that we have to really, first of all, we have to, we have to use a little bit more. I mean, uh, sometimes uh, you have some kind of a peak usage and uh, abnormality or something like this. So approximately, if you would like to basically really calculate how it is in practice, you would probably decide 1000 watts, which is one kilowatt uh, motor you have to put in the pump. I mean, considering there is some power is, which is lost in the motor itself, I mean, this is really a needed, pure needed power. Obviously, the motor should have more. Now, um, what's also important is that usually it's not such a good thing when motor is working all the time, like three hours, 
pumping water without any interruption. So the way how it's usually done, they have a sensor in the water tank. If the water goes down below a certain level, motor is turned on and it should really pump very fast. So the motor should have more power than even than this to exceed the consumption of the water. So whenever the power uh, whenever the level of uh, of the water in the tank is reaching certain maximum, motor should switch. So there is there are two sensors actually, on and off. Whenever it goes down, it's on to the motor. Whenever it goes up, it's off uh, to the motor. So that's how it's done, basically. Well, which means that motor should really be more powerful than whatever we are just thinking about. Well, let's say approximately 1.5 kilowatt. That would be probably a good idea. But then, what happens if the motor breaks? We need an uninterrupted water supply to the building, like 200 apartments, like 500 people. We can't just, you know, wait until we will repair or replace the motor. So we need two motors. And they should really alternate. Whenever one is um, uh, break, whenever one breaks, another should really pick up completely its function. Now, while we have both motors, it's probably wise to reduce the load on every motor and all the time alternate them. So either one is working and then it's resting and then another motor is working. So we need some electronics, some switches to do this kind of a thing. So that's basically kind of the whole example of calculations people people do when they have to, you know, design the buildings or something like this. Okay, so it's just an example. And uh, out of curiosity, uh, if you have if you have a motor of this type of a power, what exactly is the amperage um, of the electricity, of uh, electric current which goes through it? If you have, let's say, 220 volts, um, uh, if you have 200 volts uh, alternating current, and by the way, we're talking about alternating current in this particular case. So uh, then, so if you have P is equal to U times I, right? This is voltage and this is amperage. So if you have 220 volts and power is 1.5 kilowatt, then I is equal to 1500 divided by 220, which is 6.8 amperes. So you have 6.8 amperes. Now usually you have circuit breakers. Circuit breaker, uh, cer cer breakers, um, they are um, calculated based on certain amperage. If the amperage exceeds some level, then they break. So usually in the apartment, the breakers are on 10 or 20 amperes. 10 amperes for some smaller devices and 20 amperes for maybe electric stove, which really takes a lot of electricity. So basically this is kind of normal. It's below the circuit breakers limits, usual limits. Okay, that's all about, about um, electric devices which are making certain mechanical work. And this is just an example of how mechanical work is calculated. Now let's talk about heaters. So heating is another uh, usage of electric devices. Now obvious example is just a, a plain heater which heats the room or um, electric stove. Now something like a fan which use which we're using to dry the hair it has two different functions. One is purely mechanical, so there is some kind of a fan which pushes the air through, and then there is a heating element um, which, uh, 
producing basically the heat and uh, this uh, flow of air I is heated. Um, what else do we have here? Well, obviously incandescent lamp. Uh, this is where we, we are using the heat to produce light. Uh, what else? Um, drying machine. Drying machine also has three different um, electric functions. One is purely mechanical when we are rotating the drum. Another is also mechanical. It's a fan because we are pumping the air in. And the third one is heat related because the air is supposed to be hot in the drying machine. So that's also where the drying I is used. And um, as an example, let's take a look, for instance, at um, incandescent lamp. Let's say it's 100 watts and uh, 120 volts. So if you will take a look at the lamp, it's written on the lamp usually, the wattage and the voltage. All right, so if this is true, what is, uh, so this is the power consumption and this is the voltage. So the current is equal to P divided by, by V, which is equal to what? Uh, 0 0.8333 amperes. So that's the power. Okay. Uh, sorry, that's the uh, amperage, electric current. Now, now we can actually calculate the resistance of this lamp. Resistance, you remember the Ohm's law? So that would be 120 divided by this, which is 144 ohms. And now we can obviously check the formula that P is equal to uh, U divided by R uh, square or I multiplied by R square. You can just check. I mean, it's all plain arithmetic here. Um, so basically, this is the amperage which goes through uh, 100 watts uh, uh, incandescent lamp with 120 voltage. You see, com compare it with electric motor, 6.8 amperes, right? This is 0 0.833. So it's significantly less, like what, like eight times less, right? Well, obviously, I mean, the motor is doing real work. And this is, well, lamp. Lamp is a lamp. <coughs> um, electric stove consumes significantly more um, because the, the heat in the electric stove is significant. And uh, I think the amperage goes to like maybe three, four, five maybe amperes, something like this. Maybe more. It depends, obviously. Um, and um, and I also wanted to make another, just an ex as an example of um, electricity used to produce heat. Um, it's welding. You know what welding is when you are using electric arc between two electrodes. So if you have one electrode and another, there is an electric arc between them. Uh, so electric arc has a very high temperature, so that's exactly how we are talking about, that's why we are talking about heating in this particular case. And it's so high that it melts the metal. So what you have is, you have to have a source of electricity, and the source of electricity is welding machine, obviously, which has electrodes which you connect the way how you would like to connect them to a proper place. And uh, I checked the parameters. What's interesting is that the current is very, very high. It's like a lightning, a small one. So this is the amperage, 500 amperes. Um, Again, compare it to amperage in the electric motor, 6.8 or something like this. You see, it's like a hundred times more. So it's a hundred times more intense flow of electrons through the arc. And that's why they're heating the metal so much that it melts. 
and the voltage produced by the machine is something like this, which means that the power is 15,000 to 60,000 watts. So 15 kilowatts to 60 kilowatts. Depending on machine, different machines, different usages. I mean, this is a lot. So that's basically what kind of interesting, I think, about welding. Um, so the way how they do it, they first um, they put together uh, the, the contacts, and then when they just pull it a little bit, the arc still remains between between them. And why it it it's it's really there? Because we have such a high power, and it really breaks through the air. Electrons are going through the air. Usually, if not such a big, you know, power, then then they don't do it. Air is really a good I insulator, but in case the power is big, um, it goes through the air and forms an ele electric arc. Well, basically that's it. I mean, the whole lecture is just kind of an explanatory and exemplary. I just wanted you to, to be familiar with certain common devices, and uh, in, in some cases I did even some calculations, ju ju just to familiarize with how the whole thing is working. Um, this is an example of usage in electric devices. Next lecture will be about electronic devices. That might be a little bit more interesting because I will try to look inside the electronic device. Um, with electric devices we are kind of, we know what it is, a stove or a fan or a drying machine. With electronic devices it's much more interesting because I will try to really look inside. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.